Hey everybody, what's up? Circus here, coming at you with another Battle Phase recap video. This one's gonna be for Battle Phase 85. It just took place a couple days ago. And we brought in Rai, he was the man on the scene. And I Hello. do believe that was the night of the head shaving, wasn't it? That was, look how much has grown since then, Jesus. Yeah, it does grow <laughs> fast, doesn't it? Yeah, it does. All right, so going into this one, were, were there a lot of expectations besides Wall of Disruption? um so this is yes this is after obviously mcs weekend and then anti-phase right afterwards so to uh more of the competitive tournaments that are that are in the scene right now um so going into monday i was expecting everyone to maybe relax play some memes but you know what everyone's like you know what let's just start whipping out wall of d's <laughs> and left and right um we saw infernity get wall of deed we saw heroes get wall of deed we saw neos get wall of deed um so it felt it felt like two years ago when the game was still nice and young and literally you had that card and you won that card or econ and you were the winner well this is a a, a big tournament right i mean they're playing for like 300 dollars, and that, that's why everybody's playing <laughs> yeah, so that, hard that, maybe 300 in a different currency you know <laughs> i don't okay. know dude <laughs> it's you always know. funny how competitive people get over uh, a small cash prize but hey Dang, you know, we encourage you with the practice yeah, yes you know? it's great all right well more memes next time on tuesday we did another tournament all the memes it was beautiful well, let's check out uh, what was brought into the, the tournament here. And look at that. People not goofing around at all. Sheer Nui, top represented, followed by Neos Invoked, Element Sabers, Witchcrafters, Blackwings, Blue Eyes, Cyber Dragons. This is pretty pretty standard stuff. It's The, the good stuff's at the bottom, right? Uh, you <laughs> send you Thunder Dragon, Super Heavy Samurai. Madolce. Madolce, yeah. We saw someone win with Madolce on stream. That was pretty embarrassing. Yeah. <laughs> uh, what were they? Were they playing the synchro version with the hoot cake and? They were the hoot cake and the wield. It was basically draw your wielders or lose. Okay, so they, they saw the performa pal video. They Good. Saw, yeah, they're yeah. copying, dude. <laughs> um, yeah, no, this is pretty much what you expect right now. We are pretty much back in a heavy, heavy back row meta. Uh, Shiranui invoked and e sabers are like the best back row meta decks. Um, Surpri again, surprisingly, Gokis is really low again. Uh, it looks like Goki for whatever reason, since it's been kind of on the upbring. Now everyone stopped playing it and just mm -hmm. switched to Neos. So I guess Neos does the same thing, but better. So um, we're just kind of sitting on that right now for the most part, uh, which, you know, I was expecting this many people turning in, but the eventual winner, which we'll get to, totally surprised me. Didn't see that coming. And look at Inferni dropping down to seven rep uh, representations. And then... Mm -hmm. Uh, Weather Painters really dropping off here. I, I feel like Weather Painters is a great ladder deck, but maybe not the best in a in a best of three situation. Yeah, especially with uh, decks like Cyber Dragon coming back. Um, mm -hmm. And a lot of our um, tournaments, in fact, right now, Battle Phase Wednesday is wrapping up, um, and Cyber Dragon is in the finals. I don't know who's going to win because it hasn't been decided yet. Um, but Cyber Dragons is their worst matchup, and Cyber Dragons, one of their worst matchups was Witchcrafter because they would negate the Cyber Dragon name, so you can't use any Cyber Dragon cards at that right. point. Um, but obviously, with Witchcrafters also taking a hit and them actually, you know, going deep in tournaments now, um, Cyber Dragons are coming back like crazy. Yeah, uh, you can see that on the ladder too, but. That's not a discussion for here. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> All right, let's narrow it down a little bit then into the top 32. Uh, Shira Nui invoke Neo's elements, element I'm savers, witchcraft. The same exact thing is the, right. It's, it. it's like perfect. It's like they all transition to the same I think, amount. I think we just cut off the bottom part of the, the, <laughs> of the graph just, here. Actually, Dark Magician being at one is kind of surprising. You think they kind of thrive in the in the heavy back row era of duelings but I mean, hey i guess not 2500 is not enough well when you're we're crashing into a wall of d right and you don't have, <laughs> you don't have a way to get those things off the oh, board oh my god there was one of the worst plays on tuesday a dark magician player um used necro valley against his opponent that had like no graveyard cards locked out both his navigations and his opponent flipped up wall of d on him and i was like what is happening <laughs> what are you doing why did you do that <laughs> So yeah, I guess maybe so. he didn't read the card. Maybe he didn't realize maybe. that it applied to him as well. He just he just opened it in the free packs. <laughs> uh, but uh, Evil Eye, that was a, a a deck we covered in Rogue decks. Here we are, mm -hmm. uh, two in the top thirty-two. How'd they do? Uh, I think they went relatively far. They was it top? Well, I think we'll see it in the in the cards. Actually, it was definitely in the top eight. I just don't remember where it ended. I don't mm -hmm. remember. It was top head. four battle phase Monday. Top four, yeah. There we go. Yeah, no, it's 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 doing very well, especially you know uh, against decks like like I said, they do very well against graveyard based decks, mm -hmm. uh, just banishing. 
Um, and the most important part being able to, after your opponent chooses what they're going to use, then you banish them. Shiranui uses their graveyard heavily. Invoked Neos uses their graveyard heavily. Invoked Element Saber uses their graveyard heavily. So there you go. Amazing against all those. Even Witchcrafter, to to a point, they right. do well against. So, yeah, pretty pretty good. We'll see what happens with the deck. Uh, we can't move on from here without mentioning, mentioning six Samurai. How did that make the top 32? <laughs> you know how Dragoonity always has like the same three, four people playing it? Right, right. There's this guy that just, his name is DD Level 21, and he loves oh, Six okay. Samurai. Yep. I, don't, I don't know how he does it, but he's constantly topping with Six Samurai, and he's just like, it's the weirdest thing. You never see him summon Shien either. It's not because he doesn't want to. It's just he's never able to summon Shien. And then it's it's like he's he doesn't care. He's like I, I'm still gonna win because I'm six samurai. And you're like, right. bro, what are you? How how are you winning? Well, it, so it, there you go. In the three tournaments that have taken place that we have statistics for this week, uh, anti phase, battle phase money, and the battle phase pop up, there's been six six sams played this week. So it's not just him. It's not just him. So there are other people that uh, have caught the bug, I guess. People see it and they're like, ah, nostalgia. Lock in six samurai. Go over right. five. <laughs> All right, let's take a look at the top eight here. Uh, we'll start with Light underscore N58 uh, playing Shiranui. There you um, go. This is a free-to-play Shiranui. I think so. I believe so. Look at look at the back row. One copy of Floodgate, one copy of Karma Cut, one Needle, one Regeki, one uh, <laughs> Ballista Squad, two Bad Aim, and a Wall of D. Uh, yeah, no that, Kazuki's playing Skull. Yeah, I was going to say, if that's not enough of a giveaway, the two Samurai Skulls <laughs> will be. Yeah. Yeah, free to play. Um, Shiranui. It it's it's still Shiranui, just different back row, no copies, you know. And oh, there you go. And I'm I'm just guessing it's one sphere Karibo. That's his one sphere Karibo that he has in the deck. Probably from the yeah. from the pack deal, yeah. yeah. Unlucky you are one dollar you are deal. And I have noticed that Spirit Master is making a comeback in this deck. Yeah, Spirit Master is an interesting card. Um yeah, I don't know if it's necessarily the way to go moving forward, but, you know, it's always been nice because it lets you special summon from the grave, right? So if you're, something happens to your Sun Saga or something, you can just bring it right back, and it triggers its effect to pop things on the board, which is pretty cool. Mm -hmm. um, and then, of course, he's playing his one of Gold Sark um, in, in place of the third tuner. By the way, do not play your th do not play three tuners. That's awful. Never do that. <laughs> <laughs> um, but, you know, he, he still decided instead of another trap card to just go with the Gold Sark. So he always has the option uh, to go Spirit Master Gold Sark and, and pop something on the board. So, yeah, not, not too terrible. Um, obviously, this is not optimized in any way. Uh, but it's still, like, as long as you have a back row, you can, you can do stuff against most decks in the meta. Right. right. So, All right. In for... Moving on to the next guy in the top eight, Alias, also playing Shira Nui. There you go. Uh, maybe More not here. so free to play, but we are seeing uh, that lava trap in there. Yeah, so this is the. Uh, I think he should have gone thirty cards if he wanted to do something like this. But this mm -hmm. is the you you use the needle bug nest, um, and then you hope to get your whirl flame, and then you hit him with your spirit master or stuff like that in order to uh, do some damage with the whirl flame. Um, of course, you know when spell specialist was completely broken and grass was unlimited, that that was the build uh, that yep. everyone played with sure knew. That was like the tier one ridiculous Shiranui build that would have been tier zero if people didn't just start playing 30 card element saber because they're like ah fuck it <laughs> it's not right. gonna matter anyway <laughs> so yeah I, I i think this this is definitely more of a he got probably lucky with a couple of draws mm -hmm. I, I don't i wouldn't play a deck list like this um but it was funny to watch on stream when it when it, when it worked it was funny to watch <laughs> yeah like you milled with the needle bud and he got the the perfect uh combo and then there you go just pop on your opponent's turn easy Okay, I'm I'm guessing there was a YouTube video on this because I've seen it quite a bit on the ladder. So there, yes. Yeah, so the uh, there was a YouTube video, a world YouTube video, but you used uh, you used cards. Um, I forgot. It's a trap card where you discard your whole hand if you don't have like a proper. Discard yeah, I've or seen that. Yeah, I've seen that yeah, version. Yeah, and then yeah, that that one's super cheesy. <laughs> I saw that in the event today. Yeah. Yeah. All right, moving on. Jefferson playing e sabers here. Element Saber making their comeback. Yep. They are, uh, this is probably the strongest E Sabers have been for a hot minute. And I just want to know even if people aren't playing Wall of D, they're playing one Wall of D in the main or one Wall of D in the side. Right. Always. It's I just hilarious because, you know, we never <laughs> stopped recommending Wall of D and we bring it up and people oh, would laugh God. at us like, Wall of D, who plays that? I do plays it in the MCS and everybody's like, man, have you heard of this card? This thing's amazing. <laughs> Wall of Disruption. I mean, it is good against Neo specifically because Neo is just going to like just 
throw up a bunch of monsters on the board in one turn. You wall of DM and you're good to go. Right. It's just funny that be, I guess because Dark Magicians aren't seeing as much play right now um, and stuff like that. Like you're seeing a lot of wall of D. So in response, people are going to start slapping in more Dark Magicians and you're going to see wall of D go with right. back again. And then the Neo, it's just like an endless cycle of the back row yeah. fight right now. But still funny that everyone literally, it's like it's like the MCS deck. Oh, he had one wall of D in the main? Put one wall of D in the main. Right. That's yeah. how we were going to win these tournaments. Let's go, yeah. boys. It worked for him. It can work for me. Oh, lordy. All right. And. Here we go. Moving on. Blue Boy also playing E-Saber. So we're seeing a bit of a pattern here. Two Shiras, two E-Sabers. All losing, obviously, in the top eight. So I'm feeling a little betrayed. Uh, he usually plays Stall. Mm -hmm. And he, he decided to play the worser version of Stall. I mean, what is this? Where's your roids, it, it, dude? It's got Lava Golem, so I'm happy. It's got Lava you know? Golem. Yeah, I mean, this is it's it's just E Saber, just it it just E Sabers with different back row for the most part. Uh, and kite roid, the, and kite roid, and kite roid. Yeah, <laughs> even in the kite roid, he can't he can't let go fully of his roids. Again, right. three wall D in the side. I'm telling you, people are catching on. You gotta have it ready. Yeah, I mean, look at oh, the God. the back row though. We saw this in a couple other decks when I was going through them uh, that night. There's a lot of Highlander back row. They're just like, I just need this yeah. in case of that situation. I need this one in case of that situation. Well, we are in a meta, obviously, that's a little bit slower um which that might change very soon because of all the otk decks kind of making a comeback because everyone stopped playing sphere Kribo. um but since everyone's kind of taking it slower you know and you're if you're running against e saber neos shiranui you're gonna draw a good chunk of your deck uh and especially if you're running skills like d draw and stuff like that too then you have an option of just drawing whatever you want with enough life right. points given up so it, it makes sense that there's still there's some people are running one ofs or even two ofs um I just don't think that works for a very long period of time. It only works for like a tournament or two tournaments. Right. Well, these guys are always clawing and scraping just for that 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 little bit yeah, of advantage, one. you know. <laughs> Whatever like, it oh, is. Fine. Yeah. yeah. On um on Tuesday in the top cut, it was literally uh, it was Thunder Dragon versus Witchcrafter, and both players just waited until they drew their econ, and then they went for games. So sometimes we're <laughs> waiting till like turn fifteen, turn sixteen, where right. players are just passing back and forth because they're like, "I'm not even gonna try it. I'm not even gonna try and swing because I know you're just gonna stop me." So we're just gonna keep passing till whoever draws econ wins. <laughs> oh my, that's what that's what we've uh, come to at this point. Yeah. All right, moving on. Top four skater boy playing Ritual Beast. Ritual Beast, a fan favorite. I have found out in our channel. Which is um, kind of so weird. Guess, you guess... you wouldn't think so, right? Because yeah. just a few months ago, everybody hated this deck, and uh, that's uh, if you watch our channel, that's where the Kamel uh, Canahawk whole thing yeah. came from was his distaste for the deck. Listen, I'll chill out for my boys. Let's go, Ritual Beast. I hate them, but listen, if you guys are gonna support us, I'll support you. Let's go. <laughs> <laughs> um, I mean, yeah, the this deck sadly is unfortunately moving more towards the stall version. You're oh seeing yeah, slowly come back. You're seeing um obviously shadow game has been there for a while lava golems on the side stuff like that um so the more stall variant of shadow of uh or i'm sorry uh, uh ritual beast is coming back um they can still otk but i i definitely like the one that was more glass cannony get in there but it's just hard to do with elder and, and this yeah. uh, we talked about this a lot before where ban lists don't uh, change the meta they just make a, a an aggressive deck more passive that's pretty much what happened to ritual beast <laughs> with the elder limit so this is pretty much what you're going to expect out of ritual beasts moving forward until they get either get support or elder gets unnerfed because i mean it's not their fault what else can they do they have to play passive there's so much back row in the meta and i think there is room in their side deck there for wall of disruption so oh yeah make sure we get that the in one there. thing they're missing yeah. they need to get their wall of d's in there <laughs> All right, uh, here we go. Top four, Shiki playing Evil Eye. There's the deck we were talking there about before. Yeah. Uh, I think we were talking about in Rogue decks how this deck just doesn't have a boss monster. It just has two, <laughs> yeah. like, random monsters thrown into the deck, and they say good luck. And, Pretty much, yeah. You know, I mean, top four is Admiral. Um, you know, and I, something I forgot to actually mention, the Storm being really, really good. Yes. Um, I think I briefly touched on it, but it's really good right now to clear up back row. Um, and of course, Evil Eye can get searches when their back row is destroyed. Not, well, not really. It's not really even back row. It's their equips and their field spell. <laughs> when those get destroyed, they get um, special effects off of them. So, you know, it's it's an interesting deck, and I'm de it's de definitely a deck I'm keeping my eye on because it it is topping tournaments. It's mm -hmm. winning tournaments. Um, so, you know, it's it's one of the. It's kind of like when Gokis weren't tier three, but it's like, mm, I don't know, man. Gokis yeah. are like winning a lot. What's happening here? And then as soon as it's like everyone's like, yeah, they're good. 
everyone just stopped playing them. Right. <laughs> so we'll have to see what happens with Eve of Life. It's a similar situation, or if this is like really like, yeah, this this deck's legit, you know? Uh, Storm's a nice card because obviously you could take out as many of your cards as possible to take out as many as your opponents as possible. And usually you go negative one because of it, because you're using the Storm to do it. But in a deck like this or uh, Witchcrafters, it actually doesn't hurt you because your cards in the grave actually can help you. Also, something people don't know, this uh, Storm doesn't target. So uh, whatever it pops, it's popping. It's, it doesn't, you can't just be like, oh, no, you can't target me. It's like, no, 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 you're getting targeted and destroyed. But... <laughs> so it's, it's nice when you can fit a card like that in there because otherwise uh, people were complaining we don't have a lot of back row removal. Uh, so it's nice yeah. to see something like this come in. Mm-hmm. Kind of speed up the games, get rid of that back row that we keep complaining about every week. For sure, for sure. All right. Second place, the finalist, Ramon yeah. R. with Cyber Dragons. We declared them dead in the power rankings a couple <laughs> weeks ago, but I guess... They're making a slight comeback. Yeah. I mean, listen, if you just open godly, you know, you open up all your cosmics, you open up your core, you open up your hair, like, you just open Unreal, your opponent still can't do much, right. you know? So it's just funny when it works out. Uh, the reason they kind of died was, obviously... Um, the limit two on the overflow the worst part about that is not being able to play the econ or the concentrating current it's mostly it was mostly econ at the time because of the sheer Nui spam everywhere mm -hmm. so just econ taking the sun saga usually meant game for you after popping all the back row and everything um where concentrating current didn't really do that because you could concentrate current but then sun saga would just protect itself every single time right. and then you just wouldn't really be able to do anything um, but if you're not against something like that, if you're, and again, we're in a meta right now where there's not a lot of anti-targeting. That's why Kanadi is better than Floodgate right now. You know, it's kind of like the, the trade-off there. It's like, well, if, if you can't target it, Floodgate's better. But if, if you can target it, Kanadi is better because you can't really play around Kanadi. You can play around the Floodgate. Um, but right now it's like, okay, Overflow. Overflow is really good right now. Overflow is ridiculous. So we don't need the Econ really to, to prevail. And of course, the, it, it doesn't target. Um, so non-targeting destruction, who cares? Pop it, pop it. And then uh, the, the Overflow Fusion for the back row removal. Yeah. Really, really strong. So <laughs> I do like the Amano Amato in the side deck. Right. <laughs> in what situation are you pulling that out? <laughs> you know? Against Sphere Karibo. Because like once you clear everything, if you don't get if you get sphere creep you're 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 done as cyber right, dragon. Like right. you don't have it. you have a twenty one hundred boss monster. What are you gonna do with that? You know what I mean? Right. But if you play a mono auto, psych, no sphere karibo, you win. It's hilarious <laughs> when it works out. Now that is the cheese be. version of the deck, yeah. Yeah. All right. Uh as strong as you're claiming this deck to be, they did end up losing to Karasuno <laughs> yeah. and his heroes. Yeah, this is a funny match. Uh, Karasuno plays one Hey Trunade, and in game two and in game three, he drew both of them in the opening hand. Right. Second. Yeah. It's like how do Attacking you do that? Is the <laughs> uh, yeah. I mean, obviously, we could you, we could replay this final ten times, and we'd probably get ten different results. You know what I mean? Like it's just right. every single right. time there's a different winner. Um, there's no skill that goes in between this matchup. It's literally whoever whoever went second and actually right. drew well. If yeah. both players drew worse. Then it's just kind of a it's like well i don't know just whoever draws their their cards they need to win first wins yeah <laughs> there isn't there isn't too much i mean there's stuff obviously if, if you if you sat both players down and said this is the matchup that's going to happen they could side deck and stuff but in a tournament where you're going through five rounds of swiss into the top 32 you don't know that you're going to play heroes in the finals you know you don't even know if right. you're getting to the finals so hey hey you know he got there and then it was just like a coin flip of who was going to win i was surprised it went to get three games that was pretty cool but yeah well, we see him playing Restart here, which you usually don't see heroes playing. He's siding Master of Fusion. Yeah, I don't think he actually used Restart in the finals when we watched him, but yeah, there you go. Using the Restart. Damn. Yeah, that, 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 that's a nice skill to have, but as soon as you use it, you, you kind of shoot yourself in the foot. Yeah, it's 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 literally being like, when you use Restart, you got to look at your hand and be like, yeah, I'm going to lose this duel. Because if you don't say that, then there's no reason restarting because right. if, you, if you restart and get a worse hand or you, you just even like an okay hand, losing your draw basically guarantees you're going to lose the duel. Yeah. Uh, so it's it's kind of risky to go yeah, for it. Yeah, skipping your draw is just like one of the worst things you can do. It really is. It's 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 awful because yeah. cause in Yu-Gi-Oh, one card can unbrick your entire hand and, and unbricking your hand could be the difference between you winning and losing. So Look at really Infernity. Yeah, look <laughs> at Infernity. Oh, my God. <laughs> 
All right. Yeah. I'm, so I was really surprised Heroes won. We're in a back row where we get heavy meta. Mm -hmm. I guess Hatred Nade is just that good of a card. Un Unlimited Hatred Nade, Konami. Let's go. It's going to be Hatred Nade and Walla D in every deck. <laughs> oh my god. Not like this. All right. Moving forward for next week, next battle phase. It's always hard to predict what we're going to see. I, I think we're going to see Element Sabers still on the rise right now. Uh, just looking at the data that we have already this week, they're the most represented deck in the meta. Uh, mm -hmm. right after Shiranui. Shiranui is always going to be up there because it's a, a little yeah. bit easier deck to get, but then it's Element Saber. So that's going to be my prediction. Just more E-Sabers just stomping on people. I think next week we're going to see um, a lot less Wall of D. I think Wall of D was definitely like a a, a lucky card. that Flavor of the had. week. I, yeah. yeah, I don't think it's any like secret that Wall of D... Listen, if you're, you're Wall of D, you can play around it, right? Right. Um. And in most situations that I saw in the previous week where Wall of D won a game, it was because his opponent could have played around it and decided, yeah, you know what? <laughs> you know what? There's I'm no way that's swing. a Wall of D. Yeah, There's no way. You know, who so who plays like, that? It, it doesn't take very long before people are scared of swinging into water, scared of swinging right. into drowning. So I'm, I'm expecting yeah. people to stop, stop playing that. Um, I don't expect an OTK deck to win like crazy like it did this week. Um, I would expect more of probably Sabres, probably Sabres or Neos. Neos, kind of yeah. King. If, if I had to like, if I had to like tear up the, the meta right now, I would say all the Invoker decks are like the best decks in the meta right now. Right. Because Invoker yeah. itself is ridiculous. The amount of power it adds and then you just add a bunch of back row to it and you're good. You're good yeah. to go. It doesn't matter what else you do. Um, and then everything else is just like a close second. Yeah, uh, just looking at uh, the top three decks or represented decks, Shira, Nui, Element, Sabres, and Neos. They all have a pretty good conversion rate at 25% yeah. into the top 32. So I think we'll just believe, continue to see that. Uh, Neos won on Tuesday, I think, too. Yeah. Uh, yes, they did. They won yes. Battle Phase Pop-Up, yep. So I would not be surprised if the the winner of the power rankings will either be Element, Saber or Neos, I think. Yeah, at this rate, we'll, we'll just have to wait and see. I mean, Witchcrafter's yeah. putting in a... A strong showing. Uh, Ritual Beast got a lot of points right now. Heroes, Element Savers. So I mean, it, it, it yeah. it's the ones you're used to. It's just how are they yeah. how they're gonna fight it out in the top eight. You know. The one thing we did find out: Witchcrafters are not dead at all. In fact, we probably would have had a Witchcrafter in the finals of Tuesday, um, but the Witchcrafter player heavily misplayed. He even admitted to heavily misplaying. So okay. I don't. The witchcrafters aren't dead. They're still here. The nerf wasn't as bad as people made it out to be. It's 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 bad, but it's not that bad. <laughs> I was watching Battle Phase EU a little bit today. Saw our boy Neg One playing witchcrafter. So that tells you something right there. He believes in it. Yep. All right, guy. He, he hates that deck, but if he's playing it, yeah. it must be good. All right, guys. I hope you like this video because I know I do. I know Rai does. I do. Yeah. So if you do like it, make sure to like, comment, subscribe. Check us out on Twitch, Twitter, and Discord. Make sure to get in the Discord because that's where we uh, host all of our tournaments and you'll get announcements for them there. And you can always join them because they're always free to join. That's right. All right. Uh, make sure to check out Gamersups. There's a link for that in the description below. You can use the code DLE to get 10% off. Mm -hmm. All right. So we're going to get out of here. I'm Circus, and that's Rye. Bye, YouTube.